Hey everyone, I'm Michael, and this is another episode in my series, A Plant a Week. In this series, I talk about various houseplants. I highlight one for the whole video, talking about how to properly care for it, how to water it, how to propagate it, everything that you need to know to keep your plant healthy and happy. And today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite plants, the Satin Pothos. This is my favorite pothos plant, Scindapsis pictus, the satin pothos, or as it's sometimes called, the silver philodendron. But Scindapsis pictus is neither pothos nor philodendron, however they are all cousins and belong to the same genus. The word pictus means painted in Latin, and you can see why pictus was added to its name from the way the leaves look dappled in splashed markings like it's been painted. Pothos are one plant that are easy to get a hold of because they've been in cultivation for so long, but the satin pothos is a bit rarer than, say, your average golden. But lately I've found satin pothos all over from nurseries to big box stores. This plant originates from Asia, areas like Bangladesh and Indonesia, and it has a few different ways of growing. You can keep it in a hanging basket and have it drape and vine, or you can grow it on a moss pole and let it shingle. In the wild, you can typically find it shingling, which basically means it grows flat against the surface, like shingles. This plant, like most pothos, do well in a wide range of lighting. You can put it in an area that receives a lot of sun, or in a darker corner that only receives ambient lighting, and it will still grow. Mind you, it'll grow slower in an area of lower light, but that's the same for all low light tolerant plants. I've moved mine around a bit, but both my plants have been in areas where the lighting is a bit less than I could afford to give it. Right now, all my premium real estate is being monopolized by Hoyas and snow bushes and higher light plants. As far as watering, you're going to water it based on the light it gets. If this plant is in a brighter location, it's going to need more water. And if it's held back in an area where it gets only ambient light, about once a week will do. These plants like a lot of humidity, but one of the great things about them is that higher humidity isn't required for it to grow. It's an incredibly versatile plant and one of the easier pothos plants to grow. As with most tropicals, this plant prefers to be in a well-draining soil. I have mine in a mix of potting soil, orchid bark, and perlite to give it adequate drainage. It doesn't like to have wet feet, and you'll be able to tell if you're watering it too much if the leaves are turning yellow and dying. Satin pothos grow quite rapidly, I'd say even faster than my golden or marble pothos, which are prolific growers in and of themselves. Because of that, you'll want to feed your satin pothos regularly. If you're going with a chemical fertilizer, you can use a diluted mixture that's higher in nitrogen, which will promote color in the leaves. I use an organic fertilizer on all of my plants and have begun using coffee as a fertilizer, and I typically fertilize every two weeks. But if you're using a chemical fertilizer that's heavier, you might want to do it maybe every three or four weeks. The satin pothos isn't too fussy when it comes to the fertilizer it gets, as long as it gets something to help promote its prolific growth. Propagating these is the same as propagating any sort of pothos or vining philodendron. Along the vines, you'll see these little adventitious roots. Cut just below them, and then you can put the cuttings in water or sphagnum moss and wait for them to push out roots. Throughout the summer, I was propagating a number of satin pothos cuttings using both methods, and you can see how those propagations went in my Pink Princess Philodendron propagation video series. It's a mouthful. I will say that I found they root slower than traditional pothos if you're rooting them in water. Try throwing in a golden or neon pothos cutting just so the growing enzymes in those pothos can help your cuttings grow a little faster. I've never had any pest problems with my satin pothos. Even when I get fungus gnats from my heavy-handed watering, they don't seem to bother the satin pothos. I've had gnats in my golden pothos occasionally, but never here. I don't know what it is about this plant, it's just one of those plants that does incredibly well across the board. I suppose if this plant is going to have one fault, it would have to be that it is toxic. The little calcium oxalate crystals in this plant can burn your mouth and even your hands if you have delicate skin and handle the leaves too roughly for an extended period of time. It's best to keep it away from curious pets and kids and try not to get the sap on you when taking cuttings. If you do though, don't worry, it's no big deal, just make sure to wash your hands. The satin pothos is one gorgeous plant that is easy to come by and one of the easiest to grow. It really doesn't require a lot, and I've found it's even less fussy than some pothos varieties. 
This is one plant I definitely recommend picking up again and again. In my collection, I currently have two, but you can bet that I'll be adding more to it. Thanks again for watching. Remember to like and subscribe for similar content. On Mondays, I post videos about houseplants. And on Fridays, I also post videos about houseplants. And reading, writing, photography, art, and any other generic interests of mine. As always, you can find my social media links in the description below. Also, you can find links to h, h Games, the board game company I've helped create, and our debut board game, Season of Heroes. You can also find the Amazon links to my fantasy series, A Chronicle of Crowns. Thanks for watching. Bye!